This video will try to tackle the explanation of an entire family of these linked data structures, partly because they have many similarities, and also partly because I'm lazy. These include lists, trees, and in a sense, most data structures in existence are linked. It also happens to be extremely simple. All you have are a bunch of values or pieces of data floating around, what we call nodes. And then we have connections between them, which are the links which form the structure of the data structure. These connections by default are one directional, which means each node knows what it's pointing to, but not which other nodes are pointed at itself. This doesn't really matter too much because we can just point an arrow back in the opposite direction if we really needed to. Now we have a bunch of circles and lines on the screen, but putting it into code is actually quite straightforward. Let's label the nodes as one, two, three, and so on. And then you can just create the nodes as objects. All we need is to add another property to the objects telling us which other objects it's connected to. For most languages like JavaScript, we can use the fact that when you're passing an object to something, it is referenced, meaning that it isn't duplicated, but only the location of where the object is stored is given. This isn't the only way to do this, however. All that's needed is a way to tell where something is. So you can, for example, put all of the nodes into a standard array in no particular order, with each element storing the indices of the objects it's linked to. Okay, what we have on the screen is currently a mess, named by mathematicians as a graph, but we could change how stuff are connected depending on what we're trying to represent. The current one could be used for something like a social media platform where nodes are people and the links are the people they follow. But let's redo the links into a different pattern so that this time, instead of connecting nodes however you want, we have a restriction that each node only points to one other node and each node only has one node pointing at it. This forms a chain, in other words, a linked list. In code, we have almost the exact same thing as before, except just changing the links around a bit. Now, to get to the elements, all you have to do is access the links and the chain to go down the line, node1.links0.links0. Zero links zero. Since you only have one link, we can rewrite it to be more convenient and readable by renaming it to next, which just shows you where the next element in the list is. Another slightly more complex data structure is a tree, where each node has a couple of nodes it points to called its children, and said node could be the children of another node so that the node is its parent. So instead of a linked list where there are one-to-one -one connections, this is one-to-many. It could be useful in something like a file system where folders have many child folders and files. Each of both files and folders only have one containing folder. How this can be implemented into code is decently obvious and basically the same as the examples before. The reason that these data structures are used is because of its properties when editing data. As an example, let's compare the previously mentioned linked list with the standard array. Generally speaking, an array is faster than a linked list in almost everything except inserting and deleting. The reason this is, is obvious from the implementation I'll be doing. Let's try the case of adding an item to the beginning. So here we begin with five elements. Let's see what we have to do for an array where elements are physically placed next to each other, and the next element is always the one adjacent to it. When we add an element at the first location, we have to shift everything over. We have to put the new item at the zero index, move the zero item to the first index, and the first to the second, and so on. The more items we have arrayed, the more items you have to shift over, and the longer it takes to do this. This is called doing something in linear time. If five items take one second, 10 items take two seconds. In reality, this only takes milliseconds but it's still called linear time. If we use a notation called big O, which essentially tells you the shape of the graph with the x axis being the items and the y axis being the time taken. So in big O notation, this is called O n time because n represents linear correspondence with n the number of values. In a linked list, all that determines this order is connections, not where actually it is. So it is very simple. You just make item.next equals to list and that's all you need because now item is the first element. For our linked list, assigning a next property doesn't change depending on how long the list is, so it takes constant time. In big O notation, this is O1. Now let's look at simply just finding an element. For arrays, all we have to do is array 5, for example, and the time it takes is the same no matter if you're finding the fifth element or the 5 millions. This is because the index corresponds directly to where the item is. For linked lists, however, the only thing that tells you where something is is the previous node pointing to it, 
And to find the previous node, we have to get to the node before that. Essentially, if you want the fifth node, you have to do node.next.next.next.next.next in a loop. And that takes longer the longer the list is. Linked data structures are great if you're modifying data constantly. And intuitively, this makes sense because you're kind of allowing yourself to place the nodes and new values wherever you want and only changing a couple things to tell you how it's supposed to be connected. This is different from something that's kind of fixed like an array where you're spending the extra time to keep everything organized and tidy and in a single file row. Adding stuff and changing anything and deleting would take a lot longer with the benefit of having a faster read time.